Hello, welcome to another Tonalist Landscape Oil Painting Demonstration. This is your painter in residence, M. Francis McCarthy, and welcome as well to Day 26 of the Past Masters series, Volume 2. The painting I'm doing a study uh, after today was um, originally done by Camille Corot. And uh, the title I have here is Landscape. No doubt it has an actual title in real life, but many times I find the uh, reference for these um, images that I'm going to do studies after just uh, from various searches, uh, you know, for paintings, or I just come across them. But I, I collect them all in a folder, and then when it comes time to decide what, what I want to do studies after, I just start. Um, processing them and also with Camille he liked you know 20 word titles that were in French so who knows maybe I just simplified it to landscape either way Camille Corot is great if you follow this channel you know he's number two uh, in um, I believe he's number two uh, and that's Georgia Ness being the artist I've done the most studies after and I think Camille Corot would be number two I wouldn't say he's my second favorite painter. I'd have to make my second favorite, favorite second favorite painter, uh, John Francis Murphy. But there's only so many Murphys out there. He wasn't as popular as Corot, so there's a lot less. He may have painted as many paintings. I really don't know, but there's a limited amount of uh, resources and reference um, available to me online. Although who knows? Next time I, uh, I said after doing. <clears throat> studies after masters i may i may uh actually take some photos with my phone from some of the images i have in, a, in various books <clears throat> not that there's a lot of francis murphy in any of those but uh i have no shortage of camille corot reference because there's tons of books out there on him if you're interested in this um stuff now his original had a bunch of people dancing in it um that was a thing with corot and you know I don't do the figures in the landscape. I just find it distracting. It's like antithetical to what it is I'm trying to create with landscape painting. But I will say one great thing about having figures in your landscape is they give you a really great sense of proportion right off the bat because we all know the average size of a human being. So if you've got a figure in the landscape, you can definitely judge the scale like to be honest, we don't know how big this tree is, really. You could put little birds in and things, maybe, but uh, that's that was such a <laughs> such a cliche when I was a kid. Was the paintings with the little the little W birds in them? You know, I, I I've done it once or twice. It's super effective. I know why people do it, but uh, actually, the same sort of reason people put people in their landscapes. It's a uh, in the it gives you something to kind of hang your hat on, and you go, oh, okay, I know what's going on here. But, sorry for the click there. I know it's going to click. Then it click again. Sorry. So sorry. Um, Camille Corot talked a lot about him. Uh, you can find out tons about him. I definitely, uh, there's some excellent books out there. I probably have about, oh my goodness, three or four in my library. And those, I didn't even have to work at. I mean, you go to a used bookstore and look in the art section. Uh, he'll, a lot of times, like, Companies have put out a series of books and they'll have Monet, Manet, Corot, you know, um, maybe a Bizarro or Degas or any of those guys. You know, they, they'll have a, a, a smaller book that'll be part of a series. Also, um, oh, well, I wouldn't mind in my next trip to say France or England, um, you know, I wouldn't mind something more comprehensive because I really love his work. And we talked, actually, the other thing you might be wondering is like, wait a minute, you just did a old video last week of a very old study, and now you're giving us a new one, but the last new one was also Corot. It's just, and also that was 24, and this is 26. What's going on, Mike? What's going on? Well, remember how I told you I had to do photography? Well, I did, and I think this was the first one that came up, so I did all of the processing, and burned the archival video which I use as a um, 
you know, video reference for this video I'm doing now. I have to have it archived together and then sped up. So I had to do all that and the crow was first in line. And just today I saw, oh, wow, 24, 26, 25 is actually, maybe I'll do that next weekend. A really, really good study after Georgia Ness. It is juicy and you will love it. Speaking of loving stuff, if you haven't smashed that like button yet, please do. Because um, what it does is it tells YouTube that people actually like this stuff and uh, my content, I mean. And um, so uh, any interested parties that might be coming along or around, uh, YouTube will give an opportunity to uh, look at one of my videos. And uh, we all know, uh, you know, we're all, we're, we are all small fish in the big pond that is the internet now. So um, the more people that find out about my channel, the better, because, uh, you know, I've got, I think I've got some of the best content going, to be honest. It's not remedial and it's not 100% educational, but if you're really into painting, um, you're getting quite a lot and uh, it's not costing you much. But a like would be nice. It could cost you a like. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. And if you do subscribe or you are subscribed and you haven't um, smashed that bell icon next to the word subscribe, that'll tell you uh, when I put one of these things out and that way you can drop what you're doing and come over here and watch the awesome toneless video and then uh, 15 minutes later get on with your life and move on to something else or you could go uh, whirling into a tailspin of endless uh, YouTube video watching <laughs> which we probably shouldn't go into um, okay so a little about this painting um, right now you can see I'm doing uh, still my initial color knock-in and you'll notice that the image at the beginning of the video there's a bit more yellow and that's going to be accomplished with some glazing. I, I was really happy with this knock-in as a matter of fact I had it in a box and was saying okay this is good enough to photograph but then after examining the, um, the source uh, reference image by Camille, I was thinking, no, I really ought to take this a little further. And so I did. And you'll see that. I'll call it out when the video changes. It's probably coming up any minute, to be honest. Um, one of the first changes you'll see was like, right now it's kind of fresh and blue and cool. But then I'm going to glaze it with, uh, in my case, my favorite glazing color for this sort of thing is like um, transparent earth from uh, transparent earth yellow from Gamblin. Okay, there you see I'm glazing it now and that's what I'm glazing it with. And when I add that transparent earth, what I really like, it's like a yellow ochre, but it's not opaque. Um, I will almost always balance that out with a little bit of the permanent orange, which is only semi-transparent, but I'm only using a little bit. And that's to counteract the sort of greenish quality that transparent earth has. It's, it's subtle. It's a subtle greenish quality, but enough to be counteracted. And it, it could be counteracted just as well, actually, with um, uh, transparent earth red also from Gamblin, but that's such a strong color that you need to be careful because that'll take it, it'll take things and push them into a red area just right off the bat. So I prefer the subtlety of the permanent orange, even though it's semi, um, it's semi transparent. So it's taking a little bit of the darkness away from my blacks. That's okay. I'm going to reinstall a lot of that. If I'm going into a second pass, I'll, I'll restate the darks. In fact, it looks like I'm doing a little of that right now. Um, also, when we're talking about a Camille Corot study, we're talking about edges. It's a study in edges. Uh, he would accomplish his results with lots of little rice grain type strokes. Um, where I will try and do the same sort of thing, especially in the second color pass. In the first color pass, I just concentrate on not having harsh edges. So I'm kind of rubbing one color into the next and I'm not smearing, I'm rubbing. Um, and that's probably something that would be really good to learn more about. But um, actually, I'm going to address this microphone. I think I'm clipping hello here. Sorry about that. Um, but really 
to learn edges, uh, and I know I sound like a broken record, you have to practice your edges. Edges are so critical to a painting. And, you know, uh, a great way to um, teach yourself about edges would be to do a study after uh, someone like Camille Corot, because he's a master of the edges, as is uh, George Ines, and as is uh, my top my top four, actually, uh, George Ines. John Francis Murphy and Charles Warren Eaton, all masters of edges. And any good painter, any good modern landscape painter or, or old landscape painter would be very good at edges. In the old days, like the, the days of Claude Lorraine, the edges were not uh, were not as good. And uh, they had, um, well, because they hadn't learned really as much about painting and seeing, you know, this is one of the major innovations of Camille Corot, as I mentioned in my last Corot video, so I won't beat a dead horse here, but was the way he handled edges, the way he got air into his trees is definitely worth studying. And if you're into landscape painting, uh, that's a good way to, uh, to learn. But anyway, I don't do little rice grains. I ain't got time for that. Um, and I don't really like that look in my work. I love it in Camille's. I think it works great for him. But for me, I like to use a textured board and I will often dry brush some of the sky into the tree and some of the tree into the sky. And I like the dry brush because it's just going to be setting some paint on top of the peaks, um, whereas glazing will sink paint into the valleys. Um, I don't do much of that with my glazing. Sometimes I glaze with black, but it's, uh, rare. it's fairly rare and I uh because it has a real darkening effect but uh here you can see i'm restating some of the darks with my brush um a lot of these darks might have been fine before the glazing with the um, transparent earth yellow and permanent orange mixture um, but they need to be restated a bit because you lose that that little bit of um, darkness which is another hallmark of old Camille Corot. His stuff's very contrasty. He does these big dark shapes against much brighter shapes, which is very much how um, the modern cameras came, when they came along, started doing things as well. Uh, we as humans don't usually see things that intensely unless it's like sunset or twilight. Um, because what we do is we'll, we look at the sky, we see it's bright, but we look in the shadows and we fill in the details. Um, so many ways our vision is superior to most cameras unless there are these um, HDR, uh, which is, covers a fuller range of values. It would be a topic for another time. Uh, we're getting close to the end here. And uh, I'd love to thank you for watching this video and for coming back and supporting my channel. If you're a new subscriber, welcome aboard. Uh, two videos a week usually, and uh, the content's very consist consistent. So there's lots there to check out if you like what I'm doing. There's a lot. It's over 480 now, so we'll have to do something special for day 500 coming up in, I don't know, 10 weeks. <laughs> anyway, until I see you again in the middle of the week next week with one of my own paintings, meanwhile, uh, please take good care and stay out of trouble.